Okay. It's, uh, it's always a pleasure to be at the, in this conference. And as uh, Michelle already said and all the others said, it's, uh, it's a very nice event because it brings together all those people who are involved in marine data management. And every time, every two years, we take, we take a more or less a, 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 a snapshot of where we are at that moment. And every time we see that we all move forward, we have the same goal, but we have a different execution. But also we are converging and diverging, and that's always the nice thing. You see people that go completely different, and others who stay on a certain track. But in the end, it all comes together, and we make progress in data management. And that's, uh, that's what counts, and that makes it very interesting to be at these meetings, to, uh, to take the snapshot. Okay, Cdata Cloud. It's uh, Cdatanet, but now what's up in the cloud? That's the, uh, the title. And in fact, uh, I'll tell you something about the European Open Science Cloud, because that many of you, many of you may, might already know, but this, uh, this happened over time. And 6 May 2015, in fact, it started. It was the digital agenda from the European Commission. And they also mentioned the launch of a cloud for research data. And then things went very fast, I would say. You can see the different time slots and the different events that took place or the different uh, establishing. And then, by, uh, yeah, in fact, by 14 March 2018, there's already an implementation of a roadmap for this European Open Science Cloud. So it, it took us by storm, you could say. And the Open Science Cloud, it says here, it should give to EU a global lead in research data management and ensure that European scientists reap the full benefits of data-driven science. It also foresees setting up a European data infrastructure with high-capacity cloud solutions with supercomputing capacity. So there's a lot of promises there. But also you see it's really serious because you see the, there's a big force behind this. The EU, with all its uh, capabilities, let's say all its different DGs, they are behind this. So that means that Cdata had, had to anticipate this EOSC. And in fact, we, uh, we were quite early in uh, March 2016. So already we, we said, hey, we have to do something with this because this will happen uh, and we don't want to be overtaken. And therefore, we, uh, we, we uh, drafted the proposal, the Cdata Cloud proposal, saying, of course, we continue what we always do. We develop further our skills, our standards and our tools and services to do good data management. Considering, let's say, new developments that take place, like new technologies and new standards that are needed, uh, handling data from new instruments like HF radar, like gliders, uh, looking at Inspire compliance, the data implementation rules, looking at interoperability with other data infrastructures that are all, uh, all around us, let's say, on the, on the global scale, like in the US and Australia, others. Uh, also, do more with uh, vocabularies, expand them, do more with governance, make them more transparent. Um, and looking also, let's say, at adopting new technical approaches like sensor web enablement and, and uh, linked data principles. And there will be a lot of presentation about all these topics during these uh, days. So it will be, uh, I, I won't go very deep, but it's more for the, for the others, our colleagues, to uh, bring this forward. Also, what we uh, said in the CDATA Cloud, we have to explore the, the power or the, the capabilities of using the cloud and looking at cloud computing, also looking at big data challenges. Because they are really coming. The more data we get together, the more data we collect, and the more we can integrate those data and make them harmonized. It also means that we have more and more data to, to, uh, to be used as input for our analytical operations. So cloud computing, big data uh, challenges are really there. Another thing was that we have already our services, as uh, Michelle already showed you. So CDATA has many services. But we have, to, uh, we have to improve them, because they're not all functioning as we would like. And therefore, we also took the CDATA Cloud as a way to make it easier for data providers, or better for data providers, but also for the users. And the users got a more uh, central focal point. And then the motto was better joining in an early stage and riding the EOS wave than losing ourselves in the undertow. And that really happens if you don't step on, on this wave uh, on time. So the, for that purpose, we, we joined CDATA consortium, let's say the Marine Data Managers, together with the UDOT consortium. And UDOT are a network, a European network of e-infrastructure providers. And they are more, let's say, the computer guys, the academic uh, computing centers and others. And we said, let's join together, make a strategic cooperation, but also, of course, uh, let's say a real cooperation, uh, uh, working things out. And UDOT has quite a prominent role in the whole EOSC development. And that was the reason why we, we got together. And the leading concept for CDATA Cloud is, is three things. First of all, we have to improve further discovery and access to all the data which is out there. That means that from end to end, trying to get access to all the data coming from the research vessels, from the laboratories, from, from those people who are acquiring data, collecting data and processing data, and make it more or less unified and harmonized and validated by using common standards. And that's on the left, you see the common standards. 
So those are the, the rules that we apply to make all this, in, all this multidisciplinary data from these uh, different sources, making it all, let's say, to a common uh, approach. And nowadays they call it fairness, fair. Findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. And that, that's in one, one word what you would like to do. And then more and more, on the other side, we are developing the added value services. And for that purpose, we are looking at the cloud. The cloud as a platform to be able to support analytical operations, to uh, more or less confront scientists with a lot of data and confront them with a lot of tools with which are together on the cloud, and then help them to do their work. While, of course, they still have to do very good science. And we hope they can do better science. And that's also the promise of the EOSC. So for that purpose in, uh, in Cidata Cloud, we, uh, we, uh, I will highlight two items that we do. One is the virtual research environment. That's something that, uh, yeah, that, that will help in this, this cloud platform. And for that purpose, we reviewed first a number of theory uh, developments uh, all over the globe. And we are very lucky that we are uh, we're part of the ODIP, the Ocean Data Interoperability Platform, where we work together with colleagues from Australia, from the US, from Canada, from uh, Europe. And uh, especially in, in Australia, they were already quite ahead of us with, with, this, with this kind of uh, work. And we'll hear more about this later. Uh, based on this, we formulated a, a TOR. And in the end, let's say we have a, we have a plan, we have a, say a common infrastructure, or a, sorry, a common architecture defined, and we have we're focusing on the pilot. And this is a little bit, let's say, a picture that we have right now of the architecture and some examples. But of course, I will not tell more because there are other colleagues who will give you much more detail during the meeting. Another thing is that uh, was already told by Michel, we have a very important service in CData, which is the CDI, the Common Data Index, and that gives. In fact, uh, highly detailed, uh, uh, sorry, highly detailed information about all the data that are being collected and that we bring together in the, in the infrastructure. And it's a distributed infrastructure. It means that we have the data centers. They manage their own data. They take care of data, let's say validation and management. And then we bring it together by a common, common interface and a common uh, metadata catalog, by which you can also have a shopping mechanism to retrieve the data from those uh, federated resources. And here are some, some examples of, let's say, the coverage that we have. We have, uh, all, say, all over the world, because European, it's all European origination. But, of course, Europeans, they do research and they monitor all over the world. The monitoring is more in our national waters, but, but the uh, research is all over the globe. Uh, CDATA also has a large cooperation. So over the years, over many years that we are developing ourselves and expanding ourselves, we work together with many uh, important partners. Uh, one is the Copernicus program, which is the satellite uh, program in Europe, and they're developing all these uh, Copernicus services, of which the most important for us is the CMEMS. Uh, we work together for the, uh, or we support the MSFD, the Marine Strategy Framework Directive, especially for uh, you know, providing data and data products, which will help for uh, making indicators and assessments of the, of the environmental state. We work together with large monitoring networks that create a lot of data, and that data has to find its way to the users. And we also work with many uh, different European projects over time that, that had a data component, and then we help them to, to develop the standards and uh, apply data management. Uh, I already mentioned the Ocean Data Improbability Platform uh, in the quite uh, global uh, cooperation. We have the GEOS, the G7 uh, portal. And also we have a very important uh, uh, initiative that took place or started in uh, 2008 in Europe, the European uh, Marine Observation and Data Network, the EMODNET. And of course, as was already mentioned by Joachim, there's also now the AOs coming, the European Open, or sorry, Operational Oceanography System. And of course, these two are really made for each other. AOs and AOnet must embrace each other, and the, this, that will be a part of our future, to uh, make the pipeline from the data from the origination to the user much more robust and stable. But what you see is that by having all this cooperation, uh, CData was able to expand the CDI servers to many, many different uh, institutions, many different data centers. So we have now more than 110 connected, and they are driving, let's say, uh, subsets or, uh, of different portals. So many Ethernet portals, but also, let's say, project portals, and also the, there is also a contribution to the, let's say, the, <coughs> the global portals, like the GEOS and like the IODE portal. They are all, let's say, driven through the CData infrastructure. So there's an uptake on the, you know, on the lower half, and then it's, it's channeled through by web services to all these different portals. But also, there's a, another way, another direction. By working in all these projects and all these portals, also there is a lot of uptake of new data centers. Because there are people who said they want to join an Ebonet lot, and therefore they have to adopt the same standards and become part of this infrastructure. And this way we are able to expand 
in quite a rapid uh, way from 40 to 115 data centers right now which are connected. And this is not stopping yet, this, this wave is continuing. So we have here the installed base over Europe, where, where are the data centers located. But we have some issues with the CDI, because uh, it's, it's a nice system, but at the same time we, we know there are uh, defaults, or uh, I call there are some faults. And one is the performance for users, because right now it's a federated system. That means that if you do a shopping uh, uh, exercise, you can shop for data from different providers. And you all put them in that basket, but the moment you, and you fire it off. But the moment that you want to retrieve the data, you have to get the data from each of the individual data providers through a common interface. But it means you have to click several times to get your full basket delivered. And if you compare it with an Amazon, let's say Amazon, they have many products. They're, they're coming from different factories, different uh, manufacturers. But you order at one place, and they, dro they drop a box later at your, uh, at your home with all those different goods in there. And that's something that we have to achieve with CData as well. Also, it means that uh, there is performance in sense of time. Because it, it, uh, sometimes it takes, let's say we have a chain, we have different centers, and they all have their own rhythm. And if there is a technical default or there is a delay, of course, you as a user will, will notice that. And that's something also we would like to take out. There are also quality issues. We are using the data ourselves for, for, for in Amonet, for instance, to make products. But also in CDATNet, we do uh, uh, climatology. And then we find out that, that despite all the formatting and uh, say the, the same vocabularies, the same syntax, the same semantics, we, there's sometimes something wrong with the way that people interpreted, let's say, the, the formation or the structuring or the quality itself. And therefore, we think that also we should do more about quality uh, assurance, not only on the metadata, but also on the data itself. And finally, uh, we have uh, data centers, more than 115, they are connected by a component, we call it the download manager. And over time, uh, it can be quite, a, yeah, quite a, a difficult task, let's say, to get connected in some places. It has to do with firewalls, has to do with settings, with local configurations, but anyway, it, it takes too much time. This has to be simplified to make it work. So therefore, we said, let's uh, upgrade the CDI service, but by adopting the cloud. And uh, one of the principles is that we adopt a so-called data cache. So the data is no longer only residing at the local data centers, but it will be cached to a, by replication to a central cloud, a buffer. And from there, we deliver it. We can do quality control there, but also we can deliver it from there to the users. While, of course, the synchronization or the updating and the, and the, the further replication is an, is an effort from the different data centers that are part of the, of the network. And when we are doing this, then we also have, of course, in the cloud, we have this option for quality control, but also we have the option for transformation and conversions. And one thing we could do is, uh, is make an inspired transformation service, because everybody is struggling with the data implementation rules. If we can solve this in one go, then we have, let's say, a service which can be used by all the different uh, national, uh, let's say, the EU member states to transform this data also into inspired compliant data. And finally, what we also can do then is introduce versioning, because so far CDI is always the latest version. It's only one version, in fact, the latest. But of course, we have now more and more this provenance and this reproducibility of results for many uh, an evidence based uh, science and so on. And that means that we need to be able to reproduce and we need to maintain versions of data and metadata. And that can, we can also solve that. So that's done in this uh, new infrastructure. It's, in fact, the same CDI infrastructure. There's only one, uh, one, two, three differences. One is there is the data cloud in the middle. So our cache, let's say our data cache. We have the, the download manager is no longer called download, but it's now called the replication manager because it maintains the data buffer. And on the other hand, we have the services for uh, on the site. We have some, some block, uh, a cloud block for services for quality control and for conversioning. Sorry, for conversions. And, and that's, let's say, the, the major architectural uh, differences. But in practice, of course, it's a lot of work because it's quite working. <laughs> You're working now with, with the cloud, which, which uh, yeah, has its challenges, I would say. Also, what we did is uh, we, we have been working on this uh, G, let's say, the graphical user interface for, for a long, long time in many different flavors because we have Ableton, we have other portals. They all have the same principle, but they have their own subset or their own... Uh, dedicated uh, infrastructure, but still this goes back to maybe 15 years ago when we started this and over time of course the web technology has, uh, has marched forward and, and also uh, uh, design has marched forward and that's what we said, let's use this project also to make something completely different. Now, yeah, completely different, you know, <laughs> it's, it's not like that, but it's, I like this Monty Python uh, approach. <laughs> so what we do is uh, we are now using Elasticsearch 
which makes it uh, makes the the interface incredibly fast. So we're dealing with a couple of million entries on the metadata, but you can search incredibly fast. Almost when you lose the button, it's already there using this elastic search, but also it gives you full search, full text capabilities. That means that no longer only you can use make a, a profile using a combination of search fields by uh, pull down boxes, but you can simply make a Boolean expression. I want cadmium black sea. That's enough. And then you get all the cadmium in the black sea. And that's something that we, uh, yeah, we, we did, and it, it works very nicely. Also, we created a MyC data net. That means that you can uh, save your own searches, your own search profile. You can uh, look at your... Uh, in fact, we integrated uh, what we call the request status manager part, administration, where you can track and trace your requests. We are fully integrated in the same interface. And finally, we uh, developed a prototype that was released at the training workshops of CData Cloud, where we had more than 100 people, uh, yeah, let's say, training in the, in the new uh, tools and services. And they, uh, they did, we did the prototype there, and, uh, and a lot of people over time, they, they went there and they gave their suggestions. They tested it and they gave suggestions on this prototype. And we tried to follow up as much as possible to make this work. So what I want to do is finalize just by some, uh, yeah, some slides to show you how the new interface looks like. So we have here, the, the when you start, you get the main screen, and then just like, well, like I said with Amazon, which I already mentioned, they will ask you, are you a customer? If you are a customer, you can log in with your marine ID. If not, of course, you can register, or you can go as, a, as an uh, anonymous uh, customer. But the moment you want to order data, we always need to know your ID. So it's better to become a marine ID. But once you are a customer, we, we can, uh, so you log in with a marine ID, and then you get your, your dashboard, and there you can see your saved searches, you can see your orders, and you can see also see your history, and you can see your, uh, your uh, let's say, your query profiles. And then you get your, uh, let's say, your, uh, your dashboard for uh, searching, combining uh, the, the search criteria. You see in the background is the map, and it all works with sliding windows, so it's very easy. And I must say, what I'm doing right now, if you do it yourself on, on, your, uh, on your desktop with the computer, it's much nicer than what I'm doing here in the static sense, because you see it immediately, how it's reacting. It's very responsive. So I did a search on Terranium. So I get in the background, you see my map is being built. There are a lot of bathymetry data, which goes beyond the Terranium, but there's also uh, uh, dots, orange dots. And you see the list of the results. You click on, uh, or let's say we, on the left, you see a bar, and you, you also, it's a combination of a uh, facet search and a, uh, let's say, a structured search. So we combine two in the same interface, while in the past we had two, but now we make them together. <coughs> then we zoom in on the map. You see here a nice map of uh, the Terranian Sea. In the background is the imminent bathymetry that uh, has an extra layer. You see some uh, uh, bathymetry survey sets, and you see some dots, some CPDs and XPTs. You can click on those, and then you get the detail uh, page of such a, such a uh, element, and then you can order it put it in a, in a shopping basket, I order three. <coughs> you uh, submit, you're already in the, in, the, in the service because you're already a customer, right? you're already logged in, so you, you can move straight forward. And then you get the confirmation of your request. And then you immediately go to the dashboard by which you can follow the processing of that request. And then this data is being, uh, this the unrestricted data, is being served from the cloud. And on average it takes five to 10 minutes to be able to process your data set or your request, depending, of course, on the size and, and uh, of what you, what you have asked for. Because there's also, a, let's say, we have uh, some sort of a load balancing. That means that if there are some people that order a lot of data and there are others, many small ones, those small ones get a little bit, uh, get also a preference. They don't have to wait for the big one. The big one is being processed, but of course, but uh, the smaller ones get a little bit access. <laughs> and then, of course, finally, you can, you can download the data and use it for what you want to do. But this is really, uh, say, what I want to show you. And uh, like I said, I'm very happy to be here and uh, see the different developments. Over the, the whole PIMDAS, you will hear many more presentations from our colleagues, giving you much more details. And also, we are around for you, let's say, to talk to you and to, to answer questions. And, and also, of course, we are here to listen to others who are, uh, like I say, are on comparable tracks. And it's always good to hear what they are doing and how we can uh, enrich our knowledge and, and also work together. And, uh, and that's in the spirit of INDIS. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.